this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to do a sun study in Rhino, um, looking at direct sun penetration into a building throughout the day for several critical times of the year. And you'll see uh, on the upper right here a plan view showing sun penetration, and we're going to be able to control that sun with this slider. So you'll be able to see what, um, how much and when sun is landing in um, your building. To do this, I've started off by creating um, just a theoretical um, roof plan for uh, our building. And I've included in this design uh, some glass and some louvers and some overhangs, and we'll be able to see the effect of those. It's important to remember for this that the glass is, um, uh, in the way that Rhino renders, uh, not important. So if I take the glass layer off, you can see that now I see that direct sun coming through. If I turn the glass on, I won't be able to see it. So keep your glass off as you do this. There's only 12 steps. It begins with uh, setting a directory, as always and then importing an EPW file path, just like you have in the past. Um, you're going to want to set true north and a point. And in this version of it, um, eventually you have to think about uh, what you're going to export and the view that you're going to export. Potentially, uh, you're going to be exporting a plan like this. And so uh, given the aspect ratio of this plan, I would want my um, north arrow to show up somewhere down here along with a timestamp. We'll get to the timestamp later, but for um, selecting a uh, point for the um, for the north arrow, you should uh, select this, select set one point, and then you can go in here and, and select an appropriate place for that north arrow to show up. Um, also make sure that it is correctly positioned as uh, this is critical, as you'll see, as you see here, it will change where the sun is coming in and how. In our uh, demo here, I've got it at 335 degrees. Next step four, you're gonna see a couple components here. The analysis period that we're gonna look at for this is going to be June 21st, September 21st, and December 21st, uh, which represents the extremes of the climate and hopefully we'll be able to catch most of the sun angles there. So uh, we're going to set the day to be the 21st. We're going to set the month and hour over here at the output. There's a couple sliders. So the month is June, September, or December, which we control here. And the um, hour we control with this slider. Um, and the uh, you can see the resultant timestamp there, June at 6 a.m., 9, 10, 11, et cetera. More on this a little bit later. So that's all being controlled here. And, um, and this, is, this component is simply taking the hour of the year that represents here and concatenating the output in order to create that timestamp, which you see right there. Step six is to um, capture the view using a particular view name from your Rhino model. So in this case, my view is called plan. And so I, I want to match that. Uh, importantly, that plan is using a clipping plane. And you can see here, I've got the clipping plane. If I take that off, uh, you can see that I just see the roof, not the um, plan view. And uh, Rhino should use that clipping plane and you'll still get the shadows cast by your roof planes. Um, so make sure that when you save your view, it is saved with the clipping plane on. So resave it as plan, like that. Um, oh, whoops, I, I selected the wrong viewport there. Okay, so that's the plan. The display mode is this custom display mode that I made called shaded white. I'm going to post this to the templates folder in the class folder and uh, you should be able to download it. And actually right here, you need to import shaded white into your display mode. So to do that, you go to 
display options, display mode there, and import, and then import shaded white, and it'll show up there. And then go down and select it. Next is to set your uh, view capture to true. And when I do this, it's going to start capturing that view. You can see it here in the target folder. It has captured the, the view that was, that was current. And it has a timestamp for plan, that's the view name. 621 is June 21st, 9.0 is 9 a.m. And uh, the plan.png. So uh, what you want to do is export um, a whole day's worth of these images. Uh, in order to do all of them, I can uh, control the, the hour of the day with this slider. But every time I move that, it's going to create another uh, image capture because my image capture is set to true. So um, what I like to do is set that image capture to false so I don't keep uh, messing around with this and uh, set the input slider to match this number minus one. That's what this says. So in this case, it would be 14. And that will um, cut off the upper end at sunset. So the lower end will be at sunrise, 5 a.m., and then the upper end will be at sunset at 7 p.m. This doesn't account for daylight savings time. So in our case, uh, everything would be an hour ahead. So it actually sunset is around 8 p.m. and sunrise is about 6 a.m. I'm going to set the capture to true first. There. And if I click on this button, it's going to run through all of these slider inputs. That's what this fly component does. So I'm going to click that. It says, do you want to continue? 15 iterations will be done. I say yes. And it's going to track through them. And it's going to populate that folder with 15 images. And now I can page through those with an image viewer to see the effect. Um, And then remember to set this to false again. Uh, change the month. Now I'm in September, and the maximum is 12, so I want to set my maximum here to 11. Set this to true, and same thing. Let it fly, and it will track through. So now if I open September, it's going to give me. September. And then lastly, set the slider to December. And now we've got nine hours, nine daylight hours. So I'm going to set this to eight. And, um, and click through those. So, that, so that's it uh, for this. There's one more step if you want to do this. This is optional to make a film or an animation. And uh, generally, I set this to be one hour intervals. And so an animation is a little jumpy. Um, if you want to do that, I'd suggest um, reducing the number, the time step from one to either 0.5 or, uh, or 0.25 uh, so that it goes either every half hour or every 15 minutes. Um, something like that. So it's a little bit smoother of an animation. But of course, that's going to increase the number of, uh, of images and the time and all that. What ultimately I'd like you to do for this assignment is to lay out the um, each of these on a page so that you can see statically when you're getting a direct sun in the space and when you're not. And, it, and then for you to check against your design intent to see if that is what you want. If it's not what you want, you should redesign the um, system in order to shade those times and spaces that are desired.